Few things could be more germane to our discussion of a reality self-simulation than the nature of space and the nature of time. Albert Einstein famously said, Space and time are not conditions in which we live, but modes by which we think. There are various conceptions of time which are germane to our discussion. Heidegger has this idea that time is that which thrusts you forward into an unbearable future that you're not prepared for. It's a pessimistic conception, and yet it tells us something that time is parameterized, at least from our consciousness, around human experience and the, a series of events. This is also true in terms of biblical symbolism. Time is not just a discrete unit of you know, differ, of passing through different states and uh, what a clock would tell you time is, but history is actually a function of the important events that occur, and time is conforming to this, not vice versa. And the... So, and let, if we want to take a sort of logical and rigorous approach to this, we'll need the metaphysics of the CTMU. And so, in a reality cell simulation, you have two conjoined processes. And one, on one side you have processing, which is what is actually going into determining our particular state, what is all, all of the structure, all of the interlocking telic identification operations, the utility functions, which is which goes into saying this is the best of all possible states. And that doesn't mean that it is the best possible states, it just means that that is how reality is communicating to itself. This can be poisoned by, you know, sin and evil, etc. But fundamentally, it's a self-modeling along this to, for such that out of, a, out of a space of potential, out of all of this processing, it can play various utility functions off against each other, and that can extract out good order, and that is what is actually displayed. That is what is in the spatial, spatio-temporal extension of reality. That is what it actually occurs. That's the surface structure, but beyond that there's all this deep structure, there's this processing. And obviously the the processing is not displayed, so people want to confine everything to the material universe, but this can't be done because none of the deep structure you can actually see with your with your perception. You can't model that objectively except through advanced conceptual thought. So the processor can't the processing can't be in the display. The display is actually in the processing because it's one of the various potentiae which has been extract which has been selected by this um by this cosmic wave function. And so you can actually adjoin both of them into P, which is so there's this processor which is both processing which is both processing and displaying its own state. So it's self-dual to itself, and therefore it's the infrastructure which can run this simulation. It's both input, uh, acceptor, transducer, and output. It's doing all of the structure according to an intrinsic teleology. So if we so display is what is being displayed at any one moment, and processing in this self-dual P operator, <laughs> P operator, um, the the two the two functions which are occurring is process is display which is a, you take a little a little slice of time just one snapshot everything freezes and that is one state and then processing is the state transition syntax and so those respectively correspond to space and time or state and state transition or information and cognition and so what is causing the display state to change over time, this has to be this processing, and this is a done by a combination of cognition, and uh, the cognition is the distributed cognition of the universe into all its little points, such that it has this generalized form of self-awareness, which is the which is an abstraction from the conscious experience of human observers. Uh, so, it ha so reality has this cognition whereby it's able to apprehend itself and communicate and read and write to its own states through this extended superposition. Everything relates to itself and relates to the whole. And it does this through telic recursion. So recursion means self-calling. It's calling on its own structure, its own cognition, its own identity at these various stratified levels of telic identification operators as well as syntactors. And... That, and use it, and then according to a teleology, according to those ver that distinguishment between self and non-self, it evolves. It displays a new state.
And you can think of this, Matthew Pajot talks about this in his book, The Language of Creation, that space is, you know, this, this, wall, this walled structure, this perfect, you know, this perfect, absolute, ordered, etc. And then, but it's rigid, it's cold, it doesn't do anything. If you just had a perfectly displayed state and, it just, and reality was just frozen, then that actually wouldn't be utile at all. So in order to have any, any meaning, you have to have this cognition, this telic recursion, which thrusts you forward into the future. Reality has to adapt ad hoc. It's a holodic self-simulative scratch pad whereby it has to actually figure out the optimal configuration. And so time, is, if, if the configuration is suboptimal, time is a destructive force. If you have an unstable hierarchy, then this will, this will collapse over time. This is true of organizations, literally any, any group of things. If there's this intrinsic chaos, then it, if you give it enough time, it will fall apart. But also time, if you if it's properly integrated within the hierarchy of being, and that means that if you had truly good spatial order, then time would not be a destructive force, but it would be a regenerative force. So this is what reality is doing in order to not only exist, but also to evolve and get information and teleology from its structure and evolution, you need both space and time. So the, and when you, and when you join these two, you can actually have a complete picture of reality. We can't we can't say reality is fixed against a background of space and time, like you might say in general relativity, but instead space and time are internal to reality's processing and description and operations that it's performing on itself. The reality self-simulation, where processing corresponds to time and display corresponds to spatial extension, you can think of this as a generalization of general relativity to actually include reality at large, to include what is happening at the agentive and uh, at the agentive and subordinate level, at the levels of humans and particles, and this is how we can get a unified field theory, which explains the nature of space-time, and doesn't rely like general relativity does on this arbitrary and deterministic manifold, which is just determined by the geometry of the universe and the mass distribution of point particles. That isn't enough. You need real structure for how the universe can operate on itself and have these various levels of self-organization emergence, self-design, etc. And so you need something which Langan calls meta-time because regular time is really just a spa just an extension of space. It's a fourth dimension. This is X, Y, Z, T. And you know, I I do something I do something and that that I do something now that causes something and then the effect of that happens at some time in the future. But that effect is actually distributing programming from the past to the future in order to actualize a telon which is which I can buy which I can actu which I can actualize so it's potentializing itself in order to actualize itself existence everywhere is the will to exist so there's also this other kind of time which is meta time which is, and meta time is a combination of causation and retro causation so things can actually you know the Let's say I'm God and I want to design a star. The thought of that star precedes the actual terminal instantiation of that. It's the, there's the, these telons, these attractors, which can attract various states, uh, which are utile to some intrinsic utility. And, though, and those telons are actual, are actually got, can guide cosmic and biological and even societal evolution. These are these non-terminal potentializations, which obviously they have to be actualized by telic identification operators, but the the form of them precedes the content. The so and this is happening through perception. So you think what relates processing and display? How can reality actually evolve over time? And you need something which can bridge the gap essentially between form and content, between processing and display. And what if you do that you have to have an objective modeling of reality. And so this can be done five ways. It can be done through cognition, perception, attribution, recognition, and information. And when in human existence, our human cognitive perceptual syntax, which is a, which it, it actually breaks down into four sub-languages, the logico-mathematical syntax, the qualio-perceptual syntax, the emotelic syntax, and one other. The, so, it so it breaks down into these, and then 
it is able to relate form and content, and this is why people say there could be a reality where human beings never evolved and there is no life and consciousness. No, life and consciousness is the point of reality. Reality is simulated for the point of its own self-identification through life and consciousness. In order to bridge the gap between form and content, you need you need these five you need these five functions and that's what and that's what we're doing. We are actually integral to the structure and evolution of the universe itself. And so it's a it's hologic because because this this structure that we that we are determining as a collective across all of time, everyone that is, was or ever will be, not only humans but everything, will is determining this global syntax, this primary teller, its existence and evolution, that is embedded metacausally, meaning not only things which are happening now, but things which are happening into the future and back into the past, it all exists in a metasimultaneity, which is actually actualizing reality. That is embedded at every little point, and this is how reality can simulate itself in a generative way. It's not determined in any way, it's actually generated by the agent level tellers. So this is why we're so important to the structure and evolution of reality. It's a self simulative scratch pad, which is saying, you know, it's giving the free space for secondary tellers such as human beings, other observer participants, to evolve and to make and to make decisions. And it's saying, if there are good decisions made, what is the metaphysical structure which constitutes that decision, the syntax which is actually being operated on. And then it can take that the primary teller who is God can then extend, reinforce, and define his structure according to that secondary utility. So this is the point of reality. The simulation is happening to humans, and what it's doing is a meta-Darwinism. It's this hologic self-replication for... It's testing all these various utilities against each other such that it can... It's like, it's like the Hindus say, it's, it's Leela, it's divine play. God is... God has... It's the classical conception of God, that it creation is an overflowing of God's of God's energy and and all all of this seeks to return to himself to define reinforce and extend his structure that the the authoring of the physical world is a turning away from the one in noose towards a higher unity so God is identified with that higher unity even more than his oneness this is the idea of the logos and sophia in gnostic cosmology is that the logos which is everything which is derivable all the reasoned order the metalinguistic identity of reality this can subsist in itself but there's always something missing there's the langan talks about this it's the light which shines forever which goes beyond any rational description even the ctmu which is the most complete and advanced philosophical syntax we will ever come across the at least to my knowledge the this still can't contain beyond the syntax beyond the CTMU, which gives lattice the multi-layered veil of Maya, this you know reality self-simulation. Beyond that, we there is the light that shines forever. It's reality can't. It, this is Gödel's undecidability theorem that the truth does not equal derivability. We can't have a formal system which ever fully contains rea which ever fully contains reality. And so, rea and so there's a, this overflowing. Uh, it's always trying to envelop that ultimate oneness and this is and this is what creation is striving towards so reality is a simulation because here i have the equations for the metaformal system you see this is this is its alphabet and has tellers and syntactors and the non-terminal domain and terminal domain and this grammar and all and the the conspansive si semi-language and the you know linear ectomorphic semi-language and this intrinsic language which couples both of them in the metaformal system itself all of this is much greater. This is the only thing that you can see is the surface structure, the S sigma, which is the which is the the actual words, the spatiotemporal relations and the spa and space time is generalized to infocognition because it's inf a combination of information which is space and cognition which is time in a generalized sense. And so all of that structure is greater than what you can actually see. Reality is a simulation, we say, because this is a rather turn of phrase, because simulation and reality usually have opposite meaning. Simulation is said to be a false reality. And in a sense, this is true because the unseen is more real than the seen. There's a lot more structure. It's deeper than what we can actually physically observe. And so this is, this is why for millennia, the Hindus have talked about Maya, that there, is a, that there is an illusion which is happening in the material world such that we can envelop that higher form of unity and spiritual 
and the spiritual meaning can come and make contact with us and we can have a transcendental relationship with the universal spirit, with Brahman, with the abstracted self to include the entirety of reality. And so reality is a self-simulation because it's confining us to only the terminal display of the self-simulation. So the, the, the processing is not displayed, as we discussed. So the, the infrastructure is not displayed. You can look at a, at a computer, you know, I see these pixels, but what is actually generating those pixels? And I can say, well, it's the computer. And, but even beyond that, the computer, it has software on it, and that's you know, recording me, and there's all this technology, and you had to have product design teams and, every, and you know, venture capital, which funded Apple, etc., to get this display on my monitor. Even the entire industrial history of humankind, you can go even beyond that to the inception of reality itself, but this, it all has to come together in order to get this one state. And so there's, there's this analogy is that there is this deep structure which is determining the very little slice of that that you can actually observe. And so perception creates this feedback loop which links processing and display. This is a quote from Chris Langan. He says that everything begins as internal reality and then is externalized through perception. So just as much as we are perceiving things in the external world, the real, the, it, that, that structure is involuting into our own mind. So it's a it's a dual relationship whereby where our objective modeling is also creating that at the secondary is also creating the world at the secondary level of utility. So perception generates this conspansive manifold, this meta mathematical structure whereby reality can exist and evolve, and then it externalizes that reality. So actually makes this spatial extension, this um, and this and this conscious experience of time from this generic infocognition, and. Then, and then externalizes reality and defines reality, defines its own identity at three different levels. At the level of the, at the level, at the global level, at the agentive level, and at the subordinate level, respectively corresponding to God, human beings, and particles. So every syntactic operator, every little part, every little point particle simulates the entirety of reality, and reality is simulating every little point particle. So it's a it, it, it's like it's like Rumi said. You are not the ocean. You are not a drop in the ocean. You are the ocean in, in a drop. Every little point contains the entire structure of reality, and this is how you can have this reality self simulation with this distributed cognition at every node. It's a language which talks. To, reality is a language which talks to itself about itself for its own purposes, and the way it's qu quantized is in terms of these tertiary syntactors, which are actually communicating, instantiating, and expressing the meaning of the of the primary and secondary tellers at the global and agentive level of utility so it's a fract reality is a fractal meta language it's you know self similar at every level it's a giant romanesco broccoli and it takes the struct which mirrors the structure of heaven and the structure of earth into a single into a single unity whereby it can exist and evolve so this is why you have this divine hiddenness as such that we can we can discover that and have this self-identification event, have this omega point, the, the terminal point of cosmic and biological evolution, whereby reality can recognize its own structure through the sentient agents existing within it and transcend this Maya and actually be able to make contact with the transcendent Brahman, with ultimate reality, and, and see the even through this distributed solipsism where we can only experience a very, very small portion of reality, we can, as a collective, then identify the whole thereof, all of reality. And so this telic evolution, where, which combines all of these different prerogatives of all these limited people who can only see, who can only see, you know, a mile, a mile away and they can, and they only live 80 years, but it combines all of these prerogatives into an individuation, into an individual identity for reality, quantized at these three levels. And so the universe is like, a, is like a very wise child which is trying to read to its internal states and self-identify and mature along those lines. And so we, ha and so we, we can recognize when we, when we grasp the Logos, we see the transcendent self, which is God's true essence. And this is, this is Dante's vision of paradise at the end of at the end of Paradiso, he said, "It's you know just the just the light of the 
the light of the whole of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit subsisting in itself, this you know the pure love which that from which that light emanates, and that is the that is the inception of all of existence, that white light, the light which shines forever. So, he, he, so let the light shine forth in the darkness, and the peace of our Father in heaven be upon you. Like and subscribe. Peace.